Good evening and Happy New Year to you all. My name is Forshonda Williams and I want to welcome you to the Connections Midweek Word. I pray that this new year has been and will continue to be a blessed year full of God's grace, His favor, His mercy, and His love for you. The last few times I spoke with you, I covered believing big, getting up, and going from pain to praise. Well, I've been working really hard this year on all three of those and I hope that you have as well. That being said, I have to be honest, tonight's word was a real struggle for me. At least twice I said to myself, just do something different. It was quite literally very hard for me to put pen to paper on this word. But thank you, Father God. Let me tell you why. You see, I have a few notebooks or folders around the house that I use to jot down notes and titles of possible future little mini sermons. I've been doing this for quite a few years now. Well, the Lord prompted me to get up and thumb through the pages of these notebooks. And wouldn't you know it, I actually came across four pages of notes and the beginning of a mini sermon titled Children. Doesn't sound like a big deal, right? But here's the thing. Our youngest son walked out on us last year, August 1st, 2023. I began the notes that I found on September 13th, 2021. Saints of God, the Lord was preparing me and encouraging me almost two full years before our son walked away. Tears filled my eyes as I paused and I stared at the pages. Then I read them and I reread them. And then I thank God for them. That's when I knew without a doubt that this was definitely the message that I needed to talk about tonight. And that message is talking about our children, more specifically, our young adult children, not just mine, but anyone else out there who might be struggling with their relationship with their young adult children right now. Now, I've spent years either as a teacher, a Sunday school teacher, or actually um, out in schools, and my main focus has been on youth, 17 and under, how to pray for them, what to pray over them, and putting a godly foundation in them. And that was, and still is, needed for our young ones today. But tonight, tonight I want to talk to you and encourage you, as well as myself, about when our little ones aren't so little anymore. When they finish school, they are over the age of 18, and they've decided to walk a path that is contrary not only to what you've instilled in them, but it's contrary to God as well. So I want to focus on these few scriptures. The first is Proverbs 22, 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The next group of scriptures come from Proverbs chapter 12. I'm going to be reading 12b. 13b and 14b. 12b says this, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. 13b says, but the just shall come out of trouble. And 14b says, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. The last verse that I'm going to be talking about comes from Acts chapter 16, verse 31. And it says, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Let's look at some of the translations for Proverbs 22, 6. The phrase train up comes from the Hebrew word hanak, and it means properly, to initiate, discipline, or dedicate, train up. The phrase, the way he should go, comes from the Hebrew word dereh, and it means a course of life, or mode of action by conversation or custom. It also means toward or pathway. And the last one, he is old. That phrase comes from the Hebrew word zaken, and it means to be old or aged man. So based on this scripture, if you as parents, if you have been dedicated to training up your child or your children who are now young adults in the way, whether by conversation, action, or custom. That is, you're praying with them. You're taking them to church. You're reading and teaching them the word of God. And yes, disciplining them. But you're also living as an example to them. Then no matter what the path they take, no matter the path they take, even when it's not the path you train them for, when they are old, when they are aged, 
Let me stop right there. I don't believe that they have to be elderly before they get some wisdom, praise God. But most of us know that as we get older, we start to see things in ways that we did not see them before. We start to hear things in ways that we hadn't or refused to hear before. But when you have praying parents, hallelujah, when you are aged, you do open your heart to what God has for you. So I want you to be encouraged. When this happens to your young adult, if they decide to walk a different path than how you have trained them, when they are aged, they will not depart from that training. When I looked up depart in the Strong's Concordance, I found that it came from the Hebrew word swear. And it means to turn off, to decline, remove, take away. And my favorite, be without. So my friends, when your young adult turns around, they won't be without God. Now, I've been waiting to get to the next set of scriptures because they are the ones that brought tears to my eyes. Proverbs chapter 12, 12b says this, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Hallelujah. You are righteous. You are just and you are lawful. I'm talking to you parents out there. Your roots in the Lord run deep. Therefore, you yield fruit. Notice that the word didn't say bad fruit. Your fruit, your children are good. Proverbs 1121 B says this, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I looked up delivered in the Hebrew and the word is malat. It means to rescue, escape, save, preserve. Praise the Lord. Not only will your seed turn around, hallelujah, they will be rescued, they will be saved, and they will be preserved. Thank you, Father God. Proverbs 12, 13b says, but the just shall come out of trouble. The Hebrew word for just is sadiq, and it means righteous and lawful. You are righteous, mom and dad, and your trouble, your sarah, as it pertains to your children, that might be anguish for you, that might be distress, that might be tribulation or affliction, but be of good cheer. You are just, and the word says, you shall come, yasa, break out, depart, escape your trouble. The word of the Lord is true. His promises are yes and amen. So find your promise to stand on and believe that it is already done. Part of my trouble has been struggling with, but I want it to happen sooner rather than later, Lord. But his timing is not our timing. Proverbs 22, 6 says, and when he is old. So no matter what and no matter when or if our young adults turn, they will not depart from their training. The Lord will bring it to their remembrance just when they need it the most. And our good, good father will get all the glory in it, all the honor and all the praise. Proverbs 12, 14 B says this, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. The word recompense comes from the Hebrew word gemul, and it means benefit, deserving, reward. Hand comes from the Hebrew word yad. And I'm only going to focus on this one definition, ministry. So think about that, your hands, your ministry. The phrase shall be rendered comes from the word shuv. And some of the definitions are rejoice, convert, deliver again, recover, refresh, return, take back, turn again, bring home again. That brings my heart so much joy. You see, while our young adults might not actually ever return to our homes to live with us again, they will return home in this sense, the sense of returning to the Lord's house, to his kingdom, to his loving arms, to his grace and mercy, and most of all, to his truth. So I want to reread Proverbs 12, 14b using the Hebrews, Hebrew words, and the benefit of a man's ministry to your children shall be recovered, returned, brought home again unto him. Hallelujah and amen. I'm going to read to you the commentary from my English Standard Version on Proverbs 12, 12 through 14. It says this, 
The labor of the righteous takes root and bears fruit and leads in a path that ultimately escapes from trouble. I'm going to read that one more time. The labor of the righteous takes root and bears fruit and leads in a path that ultimately escapes trouble. So here's my takeaway of that. The labor of love, prayer, sacrifice, and teaching the word of God to your children when they were young and still in your home was not in vain, my friends. What you have planted in them goes down deep and cannot be shaken or moved. No matter what their path looks like right now, I want you to understand that they too will bear fruit and walk the good path that will allow them to escape trouble. The shiny things of this culture are very enticing to our young adults and our youth, and that pull has been strong. But I want to encourage you that no matter how strong the tug is on their hearts, the enemy cannot outpull the power of God or thwart his plans for our seed. So whatever the Lord has whispered in your ear about your child's life, young or old, whatever vision he has given you over your seed, mom and dad, I want you to stand firm in faith that the Lord will accomplish what he spoke over your children and what he has shown you about your children. Never give up fighting for them. Christ Jesus has already got the victory and so do we. We are kingdom children standing on kingdom promises protected by Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of heaven's armies. May I encourage you to find, believe, and memorize specific scriptures to pray over young adults. Stand on them without wavering and speak only good things over them until you see the manifestation of God's promises concerning them. I want to end with this last scripture and a final encouragement. Acts 16.31 says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. You believe on the Lord Jesus, you are saved, and so is your house. Remember that. Receive it, believe it, stand on it, meditate on it, and don't be moved by what you see or hear in your young adult's life right now. My last bit of encouragement, my message tonight was not just about my family. I'm hearing stories like ours from all walks of life in varying degrees, mainly from the Christian community. The enemy is busy, but we serve El Roy, the God who sees me, and he is using his saints of God all around this area to pray for prodigals to return. He sees us, brothers and sisters, and he is taking action. Yahweh Shema, the Lord is there. Stay strong and pray not only for your young adults, but for the ones around you as well. And here's just a little bit extra. While you're standing, believing, and waiting on God, don't forget to love on, spend time with, and appreciate the ones in your presence right now. God bless you, my friends, and until next time, good night.